An hour and a half long train ride on our 12th day in Europe had us entering Lucerne, a city that has been rated Switzerland's most beautiful. Here we would be spending two full days and see this beautiful city for ourselves, experience spectacular views far above the city in the Swiss Alps, taste some delicious Swiss food dishes, and watch a couple of gorgeous sunsets and sunrises. Here is Lucerne. Previous to the arrival in Lucerne, we had discovered that we could take a walking tour with an English-speaking guide via Free Walk Switzerland. This was a really great way to see several sections of the city and learn more about key places inside each of them. One of the first sites that was featured on the walking tour was the Kappelbrücke, or Chapel Bridge, a wooden footbridge that we would take a closer look at later on in the day. Next was the Jesuit Church. This was the only building we actually viewed the inside of while on the tour, and it is a bright and airy church in comparison with the majority of churches in Europe. Other walking tour stops included several beautiful buildings in the Altstadt of Lucerne, a colorful old city, rich in stories and ornately decorated houses set inside quaint squares with flowers and fountains. After a short trek across the city, we also viewed the famous Lion Monument, commemorating the service of Swiss guards massacred in the French Revolution. After almost two hours on the walking tour, our final stop was the Church of St. Leodegar, a church built in Renaissance times and one that sits a little above the old city. After the tour, we made our way back down to the riverfront and attempted to escape being toasted by the sun with a gelato break in the cool shade of one of the buildings nearby. Here we are, getting our gelato. Emily. Eating the uh, berry compote and how do you say the name? Strata? Strachatella or something like that. on a chocolate pointy cone. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Eating mango and coconut on a chocolate pointy cone. One end of the Capo was only a skip, hop, and a jump away, so we took advantage of the opportunity to view the 17th century paintings in the wooden structure of the bridge. The Chapel Bridge was built in 1365 and is Europe's oldest wooden covered bridge in addition to being the oldest truss bridge in the world. The bridge itself is 672 feet end to end and is unique in that it has an octagonal shaped water tower connected to it, a tower originally built to help fortify the city. Lucerne has quite an interesting history. The city was once a Roman settlement, but in the 8th century, after the fall of the Roman Empire, a monastery was built. The ownership of the monastery and settlement eventually passed over to the Mirabal Abbey in southern Alsace, and it wasn't until 1178 that the settlement, which eventually was named Lucerne, broke free of the abbey's rulership. Not too long afterwards, King Rudolf von Habsburg of Germany took control of the area, but in 1332, after plotting for complete independence, Lucerne at last achieved it and joined with several of the surrounding cantons to form the Swiss Confederacy. Flowing through Lake Lucerne and the city of Lucerne is the Royce River a waterway formed from several smaller ones. Though turbulent at the head of the river, towards the end it becomes much more calm before flowing into the Aare River. There are several cobblestone streets that weave to and from the river, and plenty of shops and cafes throughout the squares as well. Eventually, we made it down to Lucerne's second historic bridge, the Spreuerbrücke. This bridge was built around 1400, and it was created to connect the mills on the right bank with the baker's quarter on the left bank. The bakers of the town had to stay on the left bank in order to monitor the fires of their stoves, both to keep the fire alive and also to keep it from getting outside of the stove. Apparently this was not always possible though because there are no historic wooden houses left in the old town of Lucerne, except a few near the ramparts. Once more, you can see the advantage of having fresh water sourced locally in Switzerland. The water is pure and cool and probably a very healthy version of H2O as well. The rest of our first day was filled with a stop at the train station supermarket and walking a few miles while locating our lodgings and a place for dinner. Dessert was a tasty affair, and there is also nothing like the frothy, creamy fresh milk sourced from the Swiss Alps. Mm-mm. Today was a day for adventuring in the Alps. Our destination was Mount Pilatus, one of two famous mountain massives near Lucerne. 
It's a relatively short train ride from Lucerne to Alpnechstad, and from there, the journey to the top of Pilatus begins. From Alpnechstad, you can either hike or take the world's steepest cogwheel train to the top. We had purchased a package the day before that included the journey by rail, so we happily climbed on board one of the five coaches that operate on the railway. It is about a 30-minute journey by cogwheel train from the base of Pilatus to the top. The average gradient of the cogwheel track is 35%, but it peaks at 48% on the way. Though we were there in shoulder season, the coach quickly filled up with people and was quite packed with all of us trying to take photos and get the best glimpses of our surroundings. We originally hoped to get seats at the very top of the train, but actually found that facing backwards in the second car was much more enjoyable. The only difference between our car and the one in front of us was a narrow window at the top of the first that allowed you to see where the train was heading. But it wasn't helpful if you were sitting down, and safety rules made that mandatory. So from our rear-facing bench, we actually got to see what was below and beside us quite well. And I felt pretty happy with our locale as the cogwheel train reached from the top of the massive. Pilatus has 6,982 feet in elevation, and at the top you can enjoy hiking, listening to live folk music, taking in the views, or you can paraglide like this gal here did, minutes after her fiancé proposed to her. That is one unique proposal story. A woman just jumped off and look, if you come quickly, look, she just jumped. At the top, the views are breathtaking, and we were even there when there was considerable cloud coverage. Of course, many of those clouds were below us, so that made the mountains seem even higher and more wonderfully remote. I've since seen some photos when the clouds are not sleeping in the mountain hollows, and Pilatus really does offer a splendid view of Lake Lucerne and the Bernays Alps. Guess that means we just have to go back. There were several folk music performances that we enjoyed while there, and the first was by this gentleman playing a Swiss alphorn. He appeared to have hiked to the top with it and spontaneously performed the notes echoing off the rock walls. Also on the mountainside is the Hotel Pilatus Kulm, a hotel built in 1890 when the cogwheel train was still powered by steam. I could definitely see the advantage of staying overnight there and having access to amazing views during all hours of the day and night, including those when the trains and lifts are not in operation. A short hike takes you to the Oberhaupt or lookout point that offers a different aerial perspective of what lies below. It also shows more of the landscape on the opposite side of Pilatus and the panorama gondolas making their way up and down the mountainside. As we descended the Oberhaupt, the sound of music came floating up from the gathering below, and we found that there was a genuine yodeling performance taking place. This is authentic culture right here. Our next short hike was to one of the highest points on Pilatus, Essel Peak. At 6,953 feet, this peak offers panoramic views of the surrounding mountain landscapes and of Lake Lucerne on clear days. You may be breathing like a billow by the time you can see those views, but it's definitely worth it. At the top, there was an outcropping that allowed for an almost completely uninhibited view of the horizon, but you can pretty much stand anywhere on Essel and have an impressive scene before your eyes. A phone camera can certainly not capture the beauty of all that we saw that day, but I hope that some of this footage gives you a glimpse of what it was like and that you will one day experience this for yourself. The Swiss Alps are absolutely beautiful. So here we are on top of Mount Pilatus. 
It is hot. We dressed for weather that was 53 degrees. And there's snow on the mountains, the Swiss Alps. On the way back down the trail, we happened to notice that there were three people free climbing on the side of the mountain. And this fellow here even stopped to take a photo. Look, Mom, no hands. After a few last glimpses from the top and one more full music performance, it was time to make what we thought would be a complete descent of Mount Pilatus. But new plans emerged and bettered the former. We climbed aboard the Dragon Ride, AKA one of the panorama gondolas, and set off down the mountain. God's creation is amazingly beautiful. And when you are present in places like these, you suddenly realize how small you are. To think that we, out of all creation on earth, are the rebels. We are the ones that say, I can be a system independent of a power outside of myself. Really? God once rhetorically asked Job, quote, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measurements since you know? Or who stretched the line on it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who has laid its cornerstone?" End of quote. Are we really such independent systems? I don't think so. We certainly can't create all of this out of nothing. So why do we reject that the one who does have the power to do so and did has sovereign authority over how we live our lives? Some thoughts to ponder in a place like this is an excellent place to do so. It's good to sense your smallness. Midway down the mountain, we stopped at Fregmintake. Here we thought we would grab gelato and then hop on board our cable car. But a better plan came across our radar. We found out that we could have lunch at a pavilion down the hill. There we could purchase food and then cook it over grills that were provided. Um, picnic in the mountains? So yes, here we please. are at our um, halfway down the mountain place. We are grilling shish kebab, bratwurst, and steak on the grill that is currently smoking. And here we are above the mountain. On the mountains, above the clouds. And we're hungry. If I had to choose one day to do again, it would be this one. Spending time in the mountains, growing food along with other families out on a day trip, enjoying ridiculously fresh air and warm sunshine. This is traveling at its best, friends. Spontaneity and adventure in a brand new, exciting place. Heavenly drilling. A thick rock and vegetable kebab. And who knows what altitude. <laughs> Many thousand meter. Look at this spoon. This is not the coolest spoon ever. There at Fregmentake, there are also metal slides that have sled riders whizzing down the mountainside and then being taken back up via a pulley system that attaches to their toboggans. This was great lunch entertainment. Because we had plans back in Lucerne, we had to end our picnic at Pilatus and climb back up the hill to the cable car landing. There we jumped aboard our private cable car to finish our descent. And we pretty much had to jump on board because those things don't wait very long for their passengers. Also, this moment right here, when you launch out into midair, is my favorite. Though once again you have the option of hiking up or down the passage between Fregmentake and Kriens, the base of the mountain on this side, I highly recommend doing at least one portion of the journey in a cable car, preferably while going down.
we incidentally discovered that there is actually a quarter way point between the top and the bottom of the mountain, conveniently only a few letters different from our actual destination. So we practiced exiting a cable car before the sign says you can, exiting when you are supposed to, but at the wrong stop, and then re-entering a different cable car. Practice makes perfect, right? The weather had cleared considerably by the time we were approaching Crianz, and it was a picturesque scene that sprawled beneath the cable car as the final minutes of our airborne adventure came to a close. Bussing back to Lucerne, we were in for a singular afternoon in the city. On the first day's walking tour, we found out that though some of the towers of the Musée Wall are open to tourists, a few of them are only opened every once in a while. We just so happened to be there on one of those days, and had opportunity to venture up and down many of the towers in all about the Musée Wall. The fortifications were begun in the 1200s, and were composed of the inner ring, or town wall, and an outer ring that was on a sandstone ridge in the Allstadt. As the settlement grew into a town and then a city, more towers were added to the Musée Wall. Each of them served different purposes, from storing gunpowder to keeping time and ringing in the hour. The Zeit Tower was erected in 1442 and once featured a clock that was large enough to be seen by fishermen that were out on the lake. This is also the clock that chimes on the hour 60 seconds before any other clock in the city. These towers are aesthetic architectural feats and of course fun to explore. The stairs are quite steep to climb, not to mention narrow at times, but it's sort of like walking into history, being in these towers and learning about each of them. One of the other towers is the Hay Tower, also more widely known as the Watchtower. This fortification once stored hay in it, but it also stored gunpowder at another time. Unfortunately, a lightning strike in 1701 caused the tower to explode, along with incurring a lot of other damage. The tower is now whole once more, and it is around 144 feet tall. The last tower that we visited proffered the best view of the city below. This was Manli Tower, which sports an iron-clad figure at the top. This is the second tower in the ascending ridgeline of the Music Wall, and measures around 108 feet from its base to the pinnacle. At the conclusion of our Music Wall tour, we set off to find Lutz, a cafe that was recommended to us. Our GPS misdirected us a couple times, but we did at last discover it was right across the street from the train station. This was a tasty and fun stop. I'm glad we at last discovered its location. After our mid-afternoon treat, we made our way through the streets of the old city in search of a nice dinner location. We ended up at Versthaus Tobe, and though we had to be quick because of a table reservation after us, it was likely one of the most memorably delicious meals that we had in Switzerland. We had Swiss Rosti, a traditional salad, and two kinds of juices. Be still my beating heart, that food was so good. After dinner, we walked out onto one of the bridges and enjoyed a brilliant sunset. It was a lovely finish to a day full of what travelers dream of. And so this was Lucerne, a beautiful lakeside city full of history, color, and stories. If you are ever in Switzerland, we highly recommend visiting Lucerne and Pilatus. The two days that we spent here were well worth it, and though we had to leave this city so rich in stories, we also got to take some new ones with us, and that's one of those wonderful reasons why you should travel. <laughs>